first thing that um, you know we're dealing with is the dichotomy that you know the hotel industry, which always took pride in being a very people-intensive business, is suddenly being forced to become a almost people-less business. Uh, and I think it is so counterintuitive to all of us as hoteliers. Uh, and it is something that we are now having to deal with. Um, let me come to design. Uh, definitely, there is going to be some serious changes in design. But they're going to be of two kinds. One will be the short-term changes that we have to deal with while the pandemic is still at large. And then there will be long-term design changes which will just stay um, you know, over, over uh, a much longer period as customer behavior would have been impacted to that extent. And with the concern that this is perhaps not the last time that we're seeing a pandemic of this kind. Um, so there, I think that certain changes, um, you know, like you said, um, which I think will happen is if you have more than one exits that you can do, you would like to use them to isolate people of different kinds and just make a lesser number of people uh, gather at one place. Uh, a lot of that will happen. Um, in any case, I think for the time being with business being, um, you know, sort of on, on, on a very low edge, uh, you're not going to have too many people in the hotel and all our services are going to be fairly contactless. But in the long term, um, Ratan, I certainly think that we can safely write the obituary of the front desk, as I've said earlier. Uh, that's going to go for sure. Uh, it's all going to become contactless. It's going to become online. Uh, you're just not going to feel the necessity. And it's in line with what others have been saying when we spoke about staff. Staffing levels will need to reduce. We have to bring down our costs. We realize that we are a very cost intensive business and when we are hit by any disruptive event, we suddenly start feeling the heat of the cost that we have, the fixed cost that we carry. So design elements are going to definitely occur both on count of bringing um, you know, your staffing levels down and on the safety and security levels. Some of it will get very well ingrained in the customer's mind. Uh, so my sense is room design is going to change. We're going to have interactive rooms. See, it's technology which is already there. We've been sort of, you know, a little lax at, uh, you know, adopting it, but this will move much quicker now. So an Alexa or a Siri inside the room, which is going to, you know, uh, take care of all the services that you want inside the room to make it reasonably contactless is something that I think will become a long-term feature. Um, you know, uh, you don't need to touch anything inside the room. You can do it through, um, you know, uh, any of the voice guided apps that we have today. Um, I think in the in, in the long term, I, my own belief is that we've been talking about robots and robotics. I think they're coming. Uh, I think it's not very far fetched at all uh, to find robots delivering your room service uh, in hotels. I think that again, the technology is there. It will now get fast tracked. You'll see more people wanting it and the, and the prices will come down and it's start getting implement, implemented quicker. I also think that you, even in the luxury hotels, you're going to find vending machines and corridors which are contactless, RFID controlled. Um, your door locks are going to be RFID controlled. Your elevator will work on RFID. So there are going to be a fair amount of design changes. I also think hotels will be built in much lower GFAs than what we are accustomed to today. I think that is certainly going to happen. We're not going to see very large expanses of lobbies. I think the number of our F&B outlets are going to come down. So there are going to be all these significant design changes which will not only make us uh, more leaner, more sort of with it in terms of uh, the situation at hand and the long-term repercussion of that, but also to make our business more cost-effective. So uh, clearly, I think franchise is on a roll now. Um, and that's going to happen increasingly. Uh, I think hotels are going to be very, very uh, conscious about costs and uh, the cost of a management contract versus a franchise cost is going to come into play. Uh, so if to answer your simple question, whether franchise is now going to be a preferred route over management contract, my answer is yes. Uh, there is a very substantial, um, you know, uh, cost that uh, operators and brands levy uh, for their infrastructure. 
Um, so I think a franchise route where it is sales and marketing, loyalty, brand standards um, is, is a simpler, straightforward uh, route uh, for, for owners to take, especially for a lot of significant large uh, owners who develop their own asset management capabilities. So my sense clearly is that the franchise route is going to be the preferred route and you're going to see a big uptake of franchise. It happens globally. Uh, in India, of course, brands have been more reluctant uh, to, to follow the franchise route. Uh, but I think that's going to be uh, definitely, definitely uh, a big uh, preferred route going forward. So my so I agree with uh, with part of what Sanjay is saying that yes there will always be a, a mix of both and for larger luxury properties and uh, there will be a you know probably the management contract will continue but the point here is not purely cost and the point here is not purely revenue assuming that the same brand has the ability to give you a management contract and a franchise agreement obviously the delivery has to be uh, in in some way similar. The issue is that at least in India, the uh, management contracts have been very rigid and very and, and not too flexible. I think the management contracts need to be reimagined. And that is where the issue is. So unless management contracts are reimagined, the uh, franchise route is going to become the preferred route. And I think in my own, my own sense is that Indian hotel companies have a great opportunity to reimagine the management contract. And they could take a big steal uh, forward on, on, on the growth. The issue is not purely franchise versus management. The issue is the way the management contracts are executed in India. You know, I think a lot of uh, young graduates are feeling a little uh, insecure uh, with whatever is going on at the moment. Uh, and what I basically like to tell all of them is that uh, this is an industry, it's not, as an industry, it's not going anywhere. Uh, we're going to have maybe uh, a dip uh, as a lot of industries are going to have, have uh, because of the COVID. Of course, uh, hospitality and travel and tourism are going to be amongst the worst affected. Uh, but those of you who are looking at, uh, you know, making a career out of this, by the time you come out of uh, hotel school, uh, the industry would have bounced back, uh, you know, very, very strongly and there'll be a very large demand for people at that stage. Uh, so I don't think you should be concerned about it. Uh, I think, uh, you know, hospitality education, uh, the good thing about hospitality education and sadly some of the things that we contend with as hoteliers is we lose a lot of people to other industries. Um, it's because hospitality education sort of prepares you, um, you know, and in, 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 as a professional um, that can be used in other industries uh, which have any kind of uh, customer contact and, you know, customer service. Uh, in the service industry. So a lot of sectors uh, use hospitality people. So I don't think you need to be overtly concerned about what's going on. Uh, I think upskilling is always a great thing. Uh, we've been, you know, we've been advising everybody during this period to try and upskill while the time is available. Uh, uh, and, 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 and that will come in handy for you. But just as a, as a simple, um, you know, takeaway from this is, if you're concerned about a career in the hospitality industry, I don't think you should be. Uh, this is a short-term uh, sort of blip uh, on what is happening. Of course, it, it is getting severe, as we heard earlier, um, that you know there have been a fair amount of uh, sort of uh, furloughs that are happening and people who uh, may be out of a job, uh, at least in the short term. Uh, but this is one of those things, and I think this has happened at, to this level, perhaps for the first time in our living history, so don't let it get, um, you know, get to you to that level that you need to be concerned about your career. This is still a great place to be in and a great career, uh, you know, to make. I think hospitality, uh, one of the things I think hospitality has not done very well uh, is that we have not been able to, uh, you know, to sell the excitement about hospitality as a career. Uh, I think one of the things that we tend to do and which is the grievance that we have is the perception about this career has always been uh, very long hours, uh, you know, will you be able to do it, uh, very tough life, etc, etc. You know, all industries are very long hours, uh, everybody has a tough uh, sort of start. 
Um, but there's a lot that happens in hospitality. It's uh, such a wonderful, uh, you know, exposure to multiple things that you do inside a hotel environment. Mm -hmm. I think growth is fabulous. Uh, at a very young age, you can be a very responsible uh, executive inside a hotel. Uh, and of course, there are other opportunities for other industries that, that come your way. So please don't be concerned. Uh, you're still in a very, very safe place as far as hospitality is concerned. And all these mm -hmm. leaders who are sitting here, you can reach out to them at any time and they'll be giving you uh, similar, uh, if not better advice. Just, uh, you know, quickly, thanks so much, Samir. Uh, just quickly, I just want to mention since, uh, you know, you raised that issue that a lot of people are very concerned because of what's going on. Uh, and, and, and this is not, uh, I'm not trying to sell any business here, but I just want to say that one of the things that we're doing, because we've realized that there's a huge number of people who may be sort of out of jobs uh, because of all this, we have taken up a whole uh, list of all industries who, will, who are hiring at the moment. And we are reaching out to them to say how many of them would be happy to hire hospitality people. And we are doing the whole matchmaking service and we are going, going to start placing people in other industries, at least for those you know, who can find that employment. So I want to tell everybody that you know, things will settle down. It's just a matter of a little time. Once the economy starts opening up, offices start opening up, business start opening up, there will, be, there will be room for everybody. So don't worry. I know that it can be a concern, but yes, there's stuff happening. So it's just like a talent show, Mandeep, now you have to say that we contact you on this number. So please put your number on the screen. Of course, the, uh, we will have um, you know, new hotels coming up and, and of course there will be new entrants into this business. This is uh, a great business to be in. Uh, and I don't think that uh, this little blip is going to change that uh, in, in any long term. Um, we spoke very brief, briefly about uh, you know capital markets earlier uh, while uh, Sanjay was addressing that. Uh, I think that there's going to be a significant capital markets movement. Uh, I think there is enough capital that is um, been waiting uh, in the wings. And uh, since there is going to be distress in this sector, um, because it is a leverage sector, it's a highly leverage sector, and some of these uh, owners uh, may not be able to service their debt during this period. There's going to be um, assets that are going to be available, and there are going to be buyers who are going to buy them. Um, and definitely, there is going to be fresh investment coming into the sector, um, and that's not going anywhere uh, in, a, in, a, in a hurry. Uh, the only thing that I see, um, just to touch a little bit on the capital market sector, is that the larger investors, the, the, the private equity investors, are, are globally common. Uh, and therefore, while there may be a lot of very, very uh, attractive assets available in the more developed world, which is where a lot of capital is going to go first, and it may then flow into India, which has a lesser uh, sort of uh, return uh, on the capital employed, but uh, make no mistake, there is, uh, we've been having uh, dialogues with uh, a fair amount of uh, these investors and they're all there. They're all waiting for things to just settle down a little uh, and, 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 and a lot of fresh investment is going to come in. There will be newer players as well who will enter the market uh, in terms of buying assets and owning assets, which could then be managed or franchised uh, by a whole lot of people who are on this panel. So in short, just to summarize it, yes, there's going to be lots of fresh investment and a lot of investment which is going to come into the sector. Uh, some of the hotels will change hands and there'll be new buyers, etc. But capital flows will definitely come in. And this year, well, maybe not so much 2020, but 2021 probably is going to see a very, very significant inflow of capital coming in.